Hi everybody, my name is Marius um, Venter. Today I will be doing a very quick presentation, demonstration, configuration, whatever you want to call it, on uh, basically the VSRs and how to set up IRF, Intelligent Resilient Framework, between the actual VSR routers. Uh, once again, what this video is not at the moment, it's not an actual functionality video where I talk about the functionality of IRF. There's another video for that. You know, the way it simplifies a network, please check our channel, ABC Networking, you'll see it there. And um, the second thing that's not at this moment is a shootout between other products and uh, uh, HP products. All right, that's not the intention of this. It's merely a case of I want to go into the actual two VSRs and connect them together and basically set up right IRF so they function as one. So it's going to be a very easy configuration. You'll see we're going to pretty much start off. Give me one second just to get this out. And OK, there it is. Uh, we'll start with a router, right, uh, or two different routers. This will be VSR1 and this is VSR2 and you'll see what I'm going to actually do is I'm just going to in one device, this is one device, my one server, yeah, we all know that the VSR is a virtual services router and what I'll do is I'll create a LAN segment called IRF1 and I'll connect those two interfaces into it. Uh, once we convert this into IRF mode, I'll do a couple of display commands to show you. What we're going to effectively end up with is one virtual device, right? So we're taking two virtual routers within an actual uh, server and we're configuring them in such a way that they actually create one virtual router. Okay, so you're going to ask me, so what is this all about and what does it do? Well, effectively, you can imagine if this was connected to NIC1, right? And this guy was connected to NIC2, uh, NIC2. Two and effectively what we could do is, you know, this is one VM and that's another VM where they actually run. Uh, effectively, I could build up redundancy inside the actual server. Um, use cases for this, I'm not going to discuss too much in this video. This is just a configuration. Okay, so let's start with the fun. Okay, so let's first see. We're going to first of all um, go to, of course, the VMs just to show you. VM for workstation. And let's quickly have a look at this guy. There's, of course, VSR1, VSR2, very simple uh, configuration. If you look at the actual setup of this device, right, give me one second. Let's look at the settings there. Well, if you see there, I've got basically this one network adapter connected to a LAN segment, all right, and that LAN segment over there is something called IRF1. Okay, I'm also connected to it via something called a name pipe uh, with PuTTY. It's just easier to work inside PuTTY. So it's also something I want to show you in PuTTY how IRF actually works as a single control plane. So there's a reason I'm using the PuTTY. So this is pipe COM1, all right. And of course, let's look at the second one, the VSR. Not very exciting lab, eh? Okay, but effectively, all I want to show you how that basically the segments uh, fit together. Right, so this guy is also connected to IRF1. Of course, later on, we can actually add some more LAN segments. But for now, that's all we need. And this is pipe 2. Okay. So if we start off, I can minimize this one now. All right, so what we'll do is we'll start off with these two devices. Oh, gee, sorry about that. Okay, there they're back again. Okay, and let's see, that's VSR1. If you do a display this, uh, okay, you'll see and display current. Um, you'll see that there's no configuration on there at the moment. All right, it's a standard configuration. The only configuration I've set up is what I want to show you there. Is online auxiliary zero, right? Authentication mode none, and user role network admin. If you do a display line right now, um, it will show you that it's got one auxiliary line. You know that's normal because we've created that. And if I look at the other side, this router over there, VSR2, you'll see the name is VSR2. I'll do a display line, and you'll see pretty much the same thing. It's also got an auxiliary port, and that's basically connected to it at the moment, right? Via the console ports via PuTTY. Okay, so what we want to do is, first of all, all right, let's go to COM1, and what you want to do is display IRF for now, and and you see you can actually do configuration there, configuration, and uh, well, at the moment, there's not really much, huh? the member interfaces, there, there are no member interfaces, display IRF configuration, just want to make sure you know that there is no configuration at the moment. And if we do go into system and we do a display IRF at the moment, it says, okay, it doesn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, unless you want to do configuration. Okay, which is the same thing. You'll see afterwards, after I've converted the actual chassis to uh, IRF, you'll see it changes behavior. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is, if you look at IRF, right, one of the things you can set up is IRF member one. 
And what you want to do is have two different members. Okay, this is like slots in a chassis. So this would be slot one. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to say system. Uh, by the way, not great to do everything at the same time like I'm doing. So just to show you that everything comes together, IRF member two. Okay. At this point, what I like to do is I want to disconnect one router completely. I don't want it to be part of this whole configuration until I've set up the master. Okay, so if you do a display interface brief, you'll see right now we've got interface gigabit ethernet one slash zero. That's the interface we connected to IRF one. Right now, it's a normal standard interface. If I put an IP on the IP on the other side, I'll be able to ping each other. Okay, so let's go to interface gigabit slash one slash zero and I say shut down because I'm going to do the one side first, yeah? So this is completely out of play, this router. There's no connectivity between them at the moment. So this time, let's go to interface gigabit one slash zero. And the first thing you want to do is port link, port link mode bridge. Okay, and now we've got a link mode bridge there. I'm going to first shut this down. Quit, and I'm going to say IRF uh, to port. And normally in the switching stack, you would have specified an actual port on the IRF uh, for VSOS. We don't do that. You just say literally IRF port. And if you do the question mark there, you'll see there's a couple of commands we have, can actually run in here. Right, so from that, there's a couple of things, not major uh, things we can do, but at least you can actually get an idea of what we can actually set up there. All right, so the one thing we need to do is, we basically have to connect onto a, basically a port. All right, and if you look at the port itself, port group, what port do we want to in add to this? Well, it's an interface, yeah. And what interface? We said it was gigabit, yeah? Gigabit one slash zero. Okay, that's it. I've now basically, if you do a display this, you'll see I've actually created that inside the actual IRF port. Okay, this is different to the normal standard way of setting things up because normally we'd create IRF port one and IRF port two, but for the VSR, we don't have to since it's a logical connection in the background. Um, just very quickly, you can create a second interface there. I can't see the value of that because this port itself, if you do a display interface brief, you'll see basically it is a gigabit ethernet right port and it's got one gig at the moment, one gig speed and the VSR is currently run only one gig. So why you would want to put two logical ports as a backup, I don't understand. In real life, you know, with two different routers or, or two routers and two different sites, yeah, maybe you want to run one, one gig, one route, and another one gig, the other route. So I can understand the redundancy there, but for this, I can't see the real value of that. Okay, so for now, it's only one created. So let's go to interface gigabit one slash zero and do shut on. Okay, so that's unshut at the moment. If I do the display command again, <clears throat> you'll see this time it's going up. So that's fine. I'm happy about that. Okay, and it's in IRF mode as well. So what we want to see is mo uh, mode, okay. Chassis convert, sorry about that. Chassis convert uh, mode, right? And if you have an answer there, basically IRF. Okay, so what happens now is, remember in this actual conversion mode, what will happen is, it will basically uh, ask you for a configuration, start the configuration, if you want to save it, yes or no, because it's going to go into a reboot. And we say yes. Okay, so to leave the existing file name unchanged, press the enter key. That's normal. Flash start, I write it, yes at the moment. And it wants to check whether this configuration is capable of running in IRF mode. And yes, I wanted to verify that. Now it's rebooting. At this point, that's it. This is this router and we'll have to wait for it to come back up again. You don't see the reboot process because I'm using a main pipe. It's not an actual console cable. Right, so let's go over here. This is still shut. So quit. We set that we already created an IRF member two. That was done. Okay, but let's just confirm that again. Okay, and then we say basically the IRF port. And we say port group mode right sorry called port group uh, interface caught myself there gigabit ethernet uh, one slash zero okay and that's basically this now display whether it's in there yes it is in there okay and then we go to interface gigabit one slash zero uh, undo shut down okay that's unshut quit and what we're going to say is mode all right i jesse convert mode down Chassis convert mode, uh, 
um, IRF that says, do you want to save? Yes, overwrite that file. Yes, I want to do that. That's good. Does is it compatible? Yes, let's check. Okay, something's going to be interesting is going to happen just now. So if I go to my VSR now this time, um, let's do this. Display IRF. Okay, suddenly I actually have an IRF stack. Okay, but previously I didn't have this. I only had the option to see configuration. At, at the moment, I can see that I've actually converted to an actual stack at the moment. Right, so if you'll give this, yeah, there it is. The second one's just come up. Okay, so what we, can we see there? Display IRF. I've got member ID 1 and 2. Remember, that was this was uh, member ID 2 and this was member ID 1. Uh, basically, it's the master. I could have changed priorities and so forth. Doesn't really matter right now. Uh, effectively, the asterisk is, indicates the master, which we now can see it, can also read it. Right, and the plus sign is, means I'm actually connected to that device at that specific time. Okay, if something interesting has happened on the other side there. Remember, this used to be VSR2. Okay, now suddenly something's weird here. Okay, so what can that be? Well, that's what I wanted to show you. What's happened now is it's created one control plane. It doesn't have two control planes anymore. So if you do a display line, right, you'll suddenly see that there's two auxiliary ports, zero and one. Okay, so what's effectively happening is I'm actually connecting to auxiliary port zero. This guy's trying to connect to auxiliary port one. Okay, so it's now one control plane. So let's quickly see this. If I go to system uh, line auxiliary one and we do a display this, you'll see that there is no configuration at the moment on line one. So all I need to do is just to copy this configuration in, otherwise I can't log into it by the putty. Okay, so once I've done that, let's see if this works. There it is, and it's working, and you'll see it's changed then to VSR 1 as well. Because if you do a display IRF on this side, what do we see? Master is still 1, but 2 is now connected. So the difference between the two, if you do display IRF, is that I'm actually connected via console or name pipe. Um, to master and this guy is connected to slave okay and that pretty much concludes my configuration example of how this uh, IRF can be configured uh, please look uh, in future we'll be doing a lot of videos on IRF and the functionality of IRF and use cases for IRF right there's already some videos on our YouTube channel but uh, please support us and just go and like it and if you have any comments please let us know if you want to see something specific Thank you for your time. Appreciate it.